So here we go. This is the question that I get asked the most. How do I find an amazing conscious partner? So rather than answer everybody individually, I thought I would record this podcast episode so I can basically send people to it when they're looking for how they call in the one. So there's some things that I want to talk about because If you've been following me for a while, you know that I truly believe that everything is energy. Quantum physics has proven this, but the first thing that you need to understand is everything is energy and you are energy. And consequently, you will attract a reciprocal energy to yourself. So the first step in this process is to really make sure that you are in a good place and that you are happy. Because if you are looking for a relationship to fix you, or you're scared of being alone, and actually it's safer and easier to be in a relationship, even a dysfunctional one, because you want to distract yourself from the fact that you're not happy and you don't like your life, then I need you to wake up. (laughs) So if you're listening to me talk now, and you are being open and honest with yourself... I really need you to check in with yourself before you listen to the rest of this podcast, because if you are listening to this podcast and you have done work on yourself and you are happy and you're well adjusted and you've looked at your trauma, you've done what I call the wake up phase, as in you are conscious and you've done some healing work on yourself and life has got better, then this podcast is going to be for you. And if you're looking to call in the one. Now, if you're in a different space, if you're anxious, you're depressed, you're uh, disconnected, you are not happy with how your life looks, you feel frustrated, 99% of the population, by the way, I'm not criticizing, I'm just making you aware of where you're at. If that sounds like you, then please save yourself some time and energy. And rather than diving into a dysfunctional relationship or any relationship, it's so much better to do the work on yourself first. Because all that happens when we don't do that is we just attract people that energetically are also dysfunctional. (laughs) So if you are listening to this and you're unhappy, you're disconnected, you're depressed, you're anxious, come and join my Do Your Dharma community, right? That's what we do. We get you happy. We get you happy. We get you fulfilled. We get you connected. We get you on your healing journey. We get you to wake up. So that's the caveat number one. So if you're still listening and you would say that you've done a reasonable amount of work on yourself, then what I'm going to share with you will be of real, real value. What I see all the time in the world is that often we don't even realize, but we are seeking people who balance us out. So quite often in my Dharma community, I see people whose relationships, they may be one energy type and they've attracted their exact opposite. And initially this is really attractive because those people seem quite mysterious and actually there's lots of it about them that you resonate with because it's parts of you that you haven't accepted in yourself is the thing. But what ultimately starts to happen is those things will eventually annoy you if you haven't done the work on yourself. Now, there are some occasions out there where people meet their childhood sweethearts really, really young and the relationship is solid enough that they can both work on themselves. Like in an ideal world, you want to meet somebody who is interested in being their best version of themselves because that is something you can work with. Because realistically, the relationship is just the beginning. The work really starts when you get into the relationship because it will bring up all your stuff that you haven't looked at. So you're ready. You want to find the one. The thing is, once we, you know, once we do do some work on ourselves and once we have got ourselves into a place where we like our lives, it's only natural that that's the next thing that we want to do. We can't We can't give from a depleted place. So, you know, my work is in getting people to wake up, grow up and then show up. But really, in reality, you're not going to show up for the planet 
or until you've kind of got yourself sorted. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's so important. Like I think it's really important that we get happy, get an amazing life, then have an amazing partnership because actually a partnership that's, that's positive is a really good foundation for you then to go and do your work in the world. So it is the normal process that people generally want to meet the one and then they're in a place where they want to go out and really do more good in the world. So it's worth doing the work on yourself. As I said, I thank my lucky stars on a daily basis for my husband. Like he is amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Like I still can't believe how I managed it. (laughs) And for those of you who know my story, I was single for eight years. I was in a relationship for about four years when my mum tried to commit suicide and my partner at the time was a paramedic. And how interesting is that? There's no coincidences there. But he was a bit dysfunctional and I was definitely dysfunctional. You know, I had my drug and alcohol problems at that time. I used to go out and get absolutely wasted and cause him loads of, you know, worry. And shortly after my mum obviously tried to commit suicide, you know, he, I think it was another six months we were together. But after that, we went our separate ways. And actually, it was a real conscious un- uncoupling, actually. Like looking back on it now, we both knew we'd got to the stage where we weren't, it wasn't really working. And we literally sat down one night and had a conversation all night. And we just decided it was best that we separate. And it was difficult because I think once you've been in a relationship for a long time, you miss the companionship. So the next six months, you know, we were still kind of interconnected, so to speak. It's a polite way of putting it. But it was a, it was non-messy in the sense that we both knew it was time to end. So then I was single for eight years and I did a lot of work on myself. But I got to the point, I think it was about 2014, I just got to the point I was ready. You know, I could feel it in my bones that I was ready for the person that I wanted to meet. And this is the other thing that I think is really worth expressing is don't force it. If you're happy being single, brilliant, enjoy it. Being single is amazing. There's nothing wrong with being single, right? Being single, you can have the time of your life, especially if you're in a good place. Enjoy it. You know, there's no rush. But if you feel that you're ready, you know, that's the trigger. Because if you feel you're ready, that's the universe saying, okay, now it's time to look at this. I don't think you can force these things. You know, we have to learn to listen to our inner voice. And my inner voice really was saying, I'm ready. Okay. I had been single for eight years. I, you know, I looked good. I felt good. I was happy. I was fulfilled. I had a great circle of friends who were all conscious and all supportive. And, you know, my life was good. And that's so important because you want to get yourself into this amazing place because that's attractive, right? When you're happy, when you radiate energy, when you radiate positivity, you're going to attract a much better partner than, as I said, if you're looking for somebody to fix you. So I was there. I was in that place. You know, I was running the ATL at that point. I had amazing people in my life, but there was something missing. And that was my husband. So, so what's this process I have been alluding to? Well, get happy first, right? Get yourself into a place where you are confident and happy in yourself. You know, for me at the time, my weight was always very up and down. But at that point, I was probably, you know, in a really fit and healthy stage. I felt good about who I was, you know, I looked good, I felt good. And that was important to me, dating to feel like that. So at the beginning of 2014, I knew that I had a lot of baggage around relationships. And that's the first step. Most of us, you know, it's not our first time around the block. (laughs) You know, some of us have been married. Some of us had long-term relationships. Some of us has been damaged by relationships, et cetera, et cetera. I knew I had a lot of stuff. And when I say stuff, I thought I wasn't good enough. I thought there was something wrong with me. You know, I literally couldn't get myself in a relationship for love nor money for eight years. You know, I'd kind of, you know, had flings and short-term things, but nothing serious, nothing long-term. And I had a lot of baggage around relationships. And now what I realized is I had a very traumatic event happen around relationships. When my parents, when my mum tried to commit suicide, I found out a lot about my parents' relationship. And if you can imagine, that was a very heightened experience, finding out about your parents' relationship whilst all that other stuff was happening. And I had, I had unconsciously linked pain to relationships. So 
have a look at yourself and have a look and see if you have unconsciously linked pain to a relationship. Because if you have, even if you consciously want to bring in a relationship, you won't be able to because your unconscious, which is about 95% of your brain, will be going, no way, we're not doing that again. You got in, you got into a real pickle last time we were in a relationship. Why would we want to hurt ourselves? So literally your brain won't let you see the right people. So the first step is to let go of all your baggage. And how do we do that? Well, you have to think about and look at all your negative feelings about your past relationships. So the easiest way to do this, I I give all my doodama guys this, but actually journaling around relationships specifically is a really important thing to do. You know, journaling, you you can journal in general about your trauma to release it. But if you're journaling around relationships, just stick to relationships. And, you know, the first point to look at is what do you believe or what is it that you're telling yourself about a relationship? So all the negativity, all the stuff that's buried has to leave your system. So the simplest and easiest way to do this is to commit a certain period of time, like it might be a month, I would say a month's a good period of time, and write every morning about relationships and what you believe to be true about relationships and really look at all the negatives that you are carrying around. Now, remember, we're energetic. So if that negativity is carrying is in your system, then that is deflecting the right person coming in. So the first step is to get you clear. And you can't jump this step, people. You might want to because you think that's probably quite a lot of work. I can't be bothered to do three pages of journaling on a daily basis for at least a month. But actually, it's really important that you do it because we've got to clear out the backlog of negativity. And then I would definitely make some type of ritual out of it. I would burn that trauma that you're carrying around like maybe you've had a messy relationship and and it you know put you off and you've never had a relationship since you really need to dive into the feelings of those past relationships and and if you've got any reminders of those relationships in your life like pictures or anything that is an association to that past relationship you need to also remove that from your house and from your life So this is basically all the gunk that you're holding on to. And it would be lovely to do a little letting go, you know, take a full moon and do a little letting go exercise. And just at this stage, you're just letting go. You're not calling in, you're just letting go. So, um, you know, full moons are really, really powerful. You know, Halloween was very powerful because obviously the veil is very thin. But yeah, do some type of process where you're letting go. And this is kind of what I did, exactly what I did, actually. I um wrote my journal for about six months before I met my husband. And interestingly, it started off very dark and very negative. And then probably about a month or two in, it started to flip into what I was looking for from a relationship. And I started to play with this concept of what I was looking for from a relationship. And I started to write about my partner. But one of the most powerful exercises that I have done, which I'd love to give you guys to do, is once you've cleared out your backlog, I want you to go into the future and pretend as if your partner is in your life. Now, please don't jump these steps because they won't work. So a minimum of a month's journaling on the negative about relationships only. And then once you feel that you've let that go, do a ritual, burn it, do do something like that. Now we get to look at who you're trying to call in. And I would do an exercise where you go into the future. So go one year into the future and, you know, pick New Year's Eve or pick some monumental event it could be friends wedding you know and write as if your partner is in your life write what it feels like to have that person in your life I remember bizarrely actually I should get my could get my book out and read to you actually that would be quite interesting but I remember bizarrely writing about how I wanted my partner to hold my hand when I was asleep and I kid you not this is what Matt does like even in his sleep it's so cute he'll just roll over and grab 
and grab my hand. It's just so gorgeous. And be careful what you wish for is the other thing I'd say, because I remember writing, for some reason I had this idea in my head that this, the man I was going to meet was going to be obviously tall, dark and handsome, but travel for work. And that was something he did. And of course, when I met Matt, that's exactly what he did. He traveled for work and then he'd be away for really long periods of time. So be careful what you wish for, but go into the future and write as if your partner is in your life. And if you do it around New Year's Eve, it's lovely because you can pretend all your friends are with you. You're doing something together. Describe how he makes you feel. Describe what how he looks like. You know, all the obvious, all the obvious things. So once you have written down what you would like your relationship to be like and how you feel, it's very important that you put about how you feel in the relationship, make sure you are getting yourself out and about. Yes, make sure you're getting out and about. You can't, I don't think, (laughs) I don't think I've heard many cases of your ideal person walking into the living room. So it's really important that you find something you enjoy. Find something you enjoy and dating, look at dating as a as an avenue to meet the right person. A lot of people have hang-ups about online dating. It's just the way it's done these days. And actually, it's just a medium and a way of meeting the right person. And I think the thing not to get caught up in is be really clear about who you are and what you're looking for. Don't be don't be ashamed. You know, I remember writing my profile and my profile said, spiritual woman looking to change the world, looking for a partner in crime. You know, I did not hide the fact that I had a spiritual belief system and I was here to make a difference because the right person is not going to be put off by you being who you are. Actually, it works the opposite way around. If you're all bland and namby-pamby and, oh, anybody, I'll be, you know, I'm just, you know, desperate and I'll just take anybody. Guess what? The universe has not got not got a clear sign who you are or who to send you. If you are very definite about what you are, what, who you are and what you're looking for. Like I was very clear on the type of man I was looking for. And it takes a certain level of confidence, I think, to get to that stage. But that's the work. That's the work of you need to do on yourself. And I remember writing exactly what I was looking for on my Tinder profile. By the way, I met Ta- Matt on Tinder. But before that, I asked the universe for a sign and I've actually found my journal, which is quite amazing. Like I read out parts of my journal at our wedding as part of my speech because it was amazing. Like I remember asking the universe for a sign that I wasn't going to be single for the rest of my life because I had been single for eight years and it did feel like a really, really long time. So I asked the universe for a sign and I gave the universe 24 hours you know, through my journal to give me a sign that I wasn't going to be single for much longer. And I think I started my calling in process in in New Year's Eve with my friend Runa. I wrote my journal for about six months. I dated probably once a week. And believe me, I had some rough dates like, you know, but I just looked at them as practice. I really just looked at them as practice and I didn't take it all too seriously. Uh, I didn't get hung up on like, you have to meet a lot of people. You know, I don't think it's a good idea for you just to sort of hide behind a computer screen and message somebody and, you know, get to know them on, through message because they won't be who you think they are. The best thing you can do when you're dating is just have a coffee date and have half, you know, how half an hour, maximum an hour with this person and do a coffee date and see if you resonate with them. You know, don't invest loads of time getting to know somebody before you actually met up, met up with them. OK, just do little coffee dates and do one a week. And it's not about, you know, it's just practice. If you look at it as practice, everyone that doesn't go right, it's every no is closer to a yes. It just means that you're getting closer and closer. And if you're on a date that's a bit rubbish, (laughs) just practice, you know, how you would behave on a date. You know, just use it as practice. Don't take it all too seriously. So I asked the universe for a sign that I was not going to be single. And I actually have my diary here, which is really interesting. I'm just looking at it while I'm talking to you. And I gave the universe 24 hours to give me the sign. I've got it here. Please give me a sign. I'm not alone and help me get through this period of my life. So it was my 37th birthday. So yeah, the sign that I that I got was just incredible. And it still still makes me, you know, 
what's the word? It still com- like completely blows my mind. So I wrote my diary and I asked the universe for a sign and I was with my dog and I was in, par- in the park in Battersea and we were walking back to the car. I'd just gone there to get some fresh air and sit in nature and write and, and surrender actually. And as I was walking back to the car, I walked along the ground and I saw on the floor something glinting at me. And of course I bent down to pick it up. And when I bent that down to pick it up, it was actually a costume jewellery engagement ring. Now, I kid you not, I know some of you who followed me for a while have seen this picture, but it genuinely was a costume jewellery engagement ring that fit my finger. You know, how crazy is that? You know, if you do this work and you're listening and you're, you're conscious and you are looking for the signs, the signs are so there. So that engagement ring basically gave me so much hope, as you can imagine. And I'm looking for parts of my diary to read out. But you know what it's like when you do free writing. It's so bloody hard to even read your own writing. But I wore that ring every night I went to bed. And you could do this yourself. You know, make sure it's not a ring that you've had from a previous relationship. Just do something symbolic. And then wear it every night you get in bed. Make sure you have space in your house for a partner. This is the other thing they say in French way. Make sure you make space. You know, if there's no room in your house... For them to come in, how are they going to come in? So I actually cleared out my bedside table. I'd sit on one, I'd lie on one side of the bed and I'd imagine my partner on the other side of the bed. And then I'd look at my ring. And every night when I went to bed, I'd feel so loved. And I would just feel like that sign was massive. But now I know that that was sign was given to me so I can give it to you guys to actually consciously go and buy something that demonstrates a ring or, and then wear it every night you go to bed. No one has to know. You know, you don't have to tell anyone. Tell me if it works for you. That would be amazing. But wear it when you go to bed, get a little ring and then just visualize this person being next to you. And you're, what you're doing is you're setting an intention. You're taking action towards it. And then this no tension business is really important. So don't get fixated about it. Just trust that he's coming or hers, she's coming. And every night, if you connect to it through wearing this ring, you're sending energy to it, but you're not completely attached that you're blocking it in. So that would be a very much a top tip from me about how to call in the one. Have something that you is symbolic for you around a anchor around relationships. So you're connecting energetically to it on a regular basis, but you are not fixated. Now, At the time, I was also working with a friend of mine who is a NLP specialist, and he helped me really let go of a lot of the um, negativity that I had around relationships as well. And I remember the last session that we did, we did this big parts integration. And actually, I connected with my husband in the January before we got together in the August, and he was on a dating website, and we were messaging, and we... and. He basically said he was seeing somebody and he wanted to sort of let that play out. And I said, oh, well, you know, congratulations. And I wished wished him all the best, basically. And then after this NLP session, eight, no, six months, seven months later, I went on to Tinder again and there he was. He was back. And I sent my husband a message. My husband is so weird. Sent him a message to say, oh, you're still on Tinder. I thought you'd met the one and I thought you'd, you know you'd found the person that you wanted. And he said, love had turned to friendship and that he was dating again. And I, and I actually said, well, maybe her loss is my gain. I think we met up two weeks later. And of course the rest pretty much is history, really is history. So it is totally possible, totally possible to meet the one and my story is absolutely an indication of that. And interestingly, I'm just looking at my diary here and I was really sure that actually Matt was the one. It's really fascinating to watch what I wrote. I've got here, look, so today is the day before I meet my partner. Today is the last day of being single. It's a monumental day I have been growing and developing myself for. Now starts a new chapter. And this is this is the day before I went on this date with Matt. I could feel that he was the right one. That's fascinating, isn't it? The universe gave me a sign that he is coming to me. The ring, what more of a sign could I ask for? It's so interesting reading this stuff. (laughs) 
so this is the day that I went on the date with Matt. Let's see if I can read some of this. Today is the day. Okay, I should not get my hopes up, but the feeling is good and positive. He seems so full of life and confident, sure of himself. So time will tell. I'll look, I'll look good. <laughs> so I'm feeling great. And I have my hair looking wonderful, blah, 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 blah. And then there's like a short entry. And then the day after entry, listen to this. Today, I truly believe that anything is possible. I was writing to my grandma. I put, Grandma, I know you're there. Please know I love you and that you're really special to to me and my family. Today, I thank you so much for bringing me Matt. Wow, wow, wow. (laughs) That's all I can say. More wonderful than I could ever have imagined. Taller, more handsome, such beautiful energy, such amazing smiles, such gorgeous eyes. The eyes really make it. He has the most gorgeous, sexy arms and and body. (laughs) Much better. Much better in real life than his pictures. Much better looking. I love his warm, gentle hands and the fact that he is very touchy-feely. I can feel his energy so strongly. I love the humor, the banter. Yeah, we we really hit it off. Like our first date was 10 hours. They say that you know when you know and you genuinely do. So I remember you, I used to be really annoyed about that um, expression. You'll just know when you meet the one. It was like, oh, get lost. You know, I'm so annoyed I don't. And I did. You do. So hang in there if you're waiting to meet the one. He's funny, he's sarcastic, a gentleman that appreciates good manners, a man that is successful in his own right, charming and confident and lovely. And did I say really lovely? (laughs) Very loved up already. Yeah, and that's that's my diary. And I remember reading this out at my wedding, much to obviously my husband's embarrassment. But it's powerful, you know. So this process that I have shared with you is something that anybody can do. Take your life off hold would be the other thing I would say is we can quite often just make that we're off, us fixated on finding this person. Don't do that. Just start doing and living the life you dreamed of. Start taking trips you've dreamed about, you know, go on, go and visit people, go and do retreats, go and do all the things that you're really called to do. This will put you in a really high level of vibration. And you're much better off meeting somebody when you're in a high level vibration and let go and surrender and see what the universe has in store for you. So beautiful people, I really hope that was helpful. It's all possible, right? It's totally possible. If you if you're feeling down and dejected, I like eight years I was looking for Matt, you know, but he was so worth the wait. It's really interesting looking back on it now because obviously I can't imagine life without him. But for eight years, I was really single. And what it's done is it's really made me appreciate him and the relationship we have. So, you know, I know now, again, you know, patience is a virtue. And actually, when you do meet the right one, you will really cherish and love them and appreciate them because you have been single. But it's worth doing the work. So beautiful people, I really hope that was helpful. You can do it. Absolutely, you can do it please share with me what you got from this podcast because I would love, love, love to know. And also if you guys have actually manifested your partners, I'd love to know your stories, like how you did it. What was your process? But it's the same for manifesting anything, you know, get clear, set an intention, make sure you get yourself cleared out, remove any negativity, then take action in the direction that you want to go and ultimately trust And don't fixate, just surrender to the process and find some type of anchor that you can use to connect you to and so you visualize and connect to what it is that you want. Much love to you, my friends. I will see you next week with another episode. This podcast was sponsored by my Do Your Dharma course. Create a life so good that you pinch yourself. This eight-week online course demystifies Dharma and shows you how to tune in to why you're really here. Go to www.kittytalks.com forward slash do your Dharma.